All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Legal Innovation Spotlight Live Edition. Uh, I'm Ted Theodoropoulos, CEO of InfoDash. And um, today we are going to talk a little bit about the Big Hand InfoDash integration and ways in which you can integrate financial information with intranet and, and extranet pages. So to give you guys a little bit of background on us, we are InfoDash is a legal digital workplace platform. Uh, we use the terms intranet and extranet because that's really what the market understands. Both words kind of have old school connotations. The, the new terminology is, is digital workplace solution. And we bring together data from just about every back office legal system. So InfoDash is really like DoorDash for your data. And um, we allow you to create consolidated experiences. And I'm going to show you just a, a quick slide um, that demonstrates kind of the hub and spoke model that, that we use. So InfoDash's secret sauce is our integrations and our ability to pull information from a number of different sources together and create pages and in, in that single pane of glass experience. So as you can see, there's not a single back office legal system that, that we don't integrate with. If it's got an API or a database uh, access, we can, we can get to it. Um, it looks like Rod's back here. Um, so <clears throat> this, these integrations combined with all our front end capabilities in SharePoint Online and Teams allow you to take disparate data, um, uh, data from disparate systems and create and put them on one page and display that either in your intranet through SharePoint Online, or you can create teams and, and uh, channels within teams that relate to matters or clients. And, uh, and Big Hand is our latest integration that we're super excited about. So that's, um, that is InfoDash in a nutshell. We're, again, like DoorDash for your data. We're the digital front porch of the law firm, and law firm associates usually start their day there. So Rod... Rod Wittenberg, um, the esteemed Rod. Are you esteemed, Rod? I just made that up. I think it just depends on the circles. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's great to be here. Uh, Rod Wittenberg, Senior Vice President of Financial Productivity here at Big Hand. And we're really excited for this partnership. It's one of these bring people together to create better value for our customers. So by way of background, Ted, if you don't mind popping up just a couple of the, the Big Hand slides. Um, Big Hand is a trusted business provider to the largest and, and, and the, the great mid-sized firms around the globe. If you go to the next slide, just to give you a, a bit of background for those of you who don't work with us, I mean, for those of you who do, but only work in one particular area, we cut across you know, four really big domains, and you can see them here. Today, you can see that we're going to focus on what I call the financial productivity components. And the reason we're focusing on financial productivity is law firms have become such critical business-focused entities in the legal industry. They've grown up. They've said financial metrics matter, and we want to be able to display them. If you go to the next slide, just to give you a quick high level, um, Big Hand acquired Iridium back in 2021. That's where I originally come from. Before that, it was 25 years uh, at another very large legal institution. Uh, and before that, it was law school. So as a recovering attorney, what I've loved about doing what we do is solving business problems that law firms absolutely have. 30 years ago, it was one thing in the past six, it's been how do you deliver high quality information to the desks of your, your lawyers to get them to operate more effectively as stewards of the business. So here we are, right? This is what we're doing. We, we work with 82% of um, the AMLAW 200, 83% of the UK top 200. We are literally across 4,200s. It doesn't make a difference whether you're a large or small firm. We work with hundreds of mid-sized firms that absolutely 
don't have the infrastructure, the teams to do all this on their own. So we're really looking forward to sharing this with you today. Uh, so, Ted, I think that's the, the highlight in the background uh, of who Big Hand is. Awesome. Yeah. And so let's talk a little bit about the integration and, you know, the value of bringing in the Big Hand analytic information. So as you saw from that hub and spoke graphic, InfoDash brings together all sorts of data structured, which would, you know, KPIs that that, that Big Hand provides is, is an example of that and unstructured. So that could be documents. Um, and we bring all that together into, into one interface. And that creates opportunities for holistic views of uh, clients, of matters, of practice areas. And um, we can jump in and I'm going to show you an example of what that looks like um, in real life with sample data. So you can kind of see, all right, I... I, I get it here. We're bringing in data from disparate sources. You put it all in one place. There's a There was a Harvard Business Review study, I don't know, about three years ago, shortly after COVID. And they evaluated the productivity of information workers. And they came to the conclusion that information workers spend 9% of their time reorienting themselves as they switch between platforms. So if you're going from your practice management system to your dashboard in Iridium to the document management system, again, to kind of collect information that you need to have a conversation with a client or to you know, orient yourself for uh, you know, doing work on a matter, uh, you're going to pay a 9%, we call it the toggling tax. So whenever you can eliminate that and bring information together without requiring your people to go to disparate systems, you're going to gain efficiencies. And uh, I'm going to show I'm going to show an example of that right now. So Rod, yeah. is there is there anything you want to say about the integration as I pull up the example here? I got a lot to say. I, you know, I think the the reason we came together. I remember our, our first visit. It uh, at, at at Legal Week in 2023, and we, we, we just had a great conversation, and we were having this, what would it mean if we came together uh, as business partners to bring world-class content to the desktop of, of lawyers? And, you know, frankly, that first conversation was, well, am I diluting what we're already bringing to the market by putting it somewhere else? And, you know, I'm, I'm one of these, the, the pie can always be bigger. So my thought was, no, no, I'm actually finding a way to put data in multiple places to syndicate content so that it's there where consumers want to get the data. And you and I both had this you know, meeting of the minds that wouldn't it be great if we could just take a couple of what we call key metrics. And those key metrics can be anything. You're pointing out a couple. You know, If you look at some of the data that we've uh, obtained in our surveys, we heard loud and clear over the past year from over 800 surveyed professionals that they expect 59% of the firms confirm write-offs having increased over the past year. Well, if you're writing off business, and that's a key metric and an issue for your firm, how do you put that front and center of your lawyers, of your other business professionals, to ensure that they're taking the right action at the right time to solve that? If you can make a modest 1% improvement on that on a routine basis, you're going to see increased profits and increased revenue realization over the course of the year. Well, why not put this data where a lawyer exists, right, Ted? I mean, did we, we saw this from the get-go. There's a shared value of data democratization. And, and I don't have to be the sole keeper at big hand of the data. You don't want to be the sole keeper at InfoDash. We want to create this paint and just talk, maybe talk about the paint of glass that you've been building over the years. Yeah. So as you can see here from the screenshot that we pulled up, this is an example of a, a client matter page. And, you know, there are, this, this goes down, uh, scrolls down quite a bit. There are, there's information here from probably six, six or seven disparate uh, backend systems. 
and we're bringing it all together again so you can avoid that 9% toggling tax. I mean, think about that. That's that's almost four hours a week on a 40-hour week. And we all know that lawyers work a lot more than 40 hours a week. So the savings is significant for bringing this together and avoiding that toggling tax. So kind of in the client overview, you know, you have information from the practice management system. Uh, over to the right, you can see we've got, you know, ethical wall information, matter guidelines, uh, billing guidelines. Um, below that, we've got budget information. Maybe there's tasks in here from a legal project management system. And then, <clears throat> again, all on the same page and all tied to the same client matter number. And then we've got financial information from big hand. So, you know, lawyers don't always want to go to a, a dashboard that's that's full of numbers. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they want to see those those KPIs in context with other information. So, Rod, maybe you can talk through some of the numbers here and how they how they might be useful to see in context. Yeah, so let me all so just take a quick step back. You know, lawyers, we are a risk averse bunch. Um, we know our time is a premium and therefore we want to stay focused on the things that are critical. So I, I've seen this piece over the past uh, couple of years. You got to meet your consumer where they want to be met. So we have lawyers who want you who want to have information sent to them. That can be done via an email alert, a text alert, a desktop notification. There are those, and that's sort of the push people. Then there's the pull people, those who want to come to a dashboard or come to a place where they reside on a routine basis. Um, to me, it's all about what are those fundamental things that must go right to make you a better steward of the business. And if you think about what we've seen over the course of the past year, Firms are making more business decisions on a routine basis. Where do I invest in, in people? Where do I invest in geography? Do I add an office? Do I take over an existing office? Do I shut down an office? All of this data needs to be there uh, for the professional to make uh, a decision. And that's probably at a CFO or marketing level. Then at the lawyer level, it's am I getting my time in in a way that helps push cash through the cash cycle, right? Lawyers, we know this. Timekeeping is not one of our strengths. And anything we can do to improve it is better. But I got to know that I've got a timekeeping issue. So let's put timekeeping front and center. Uh, we talked about year-end collections. The greatest thing about this industry is that they are so consistent. This fourth quarter for many firms is the rush to cash. But wouldn't it be great if we just did this on a more routine basis? If I highlight at the end of every month, at the end of every quarter, and certainly at the end of the year, where I am in my cash collections, and I put a highlight on it, I can, I, I can, I can move after this information a bit more routinely. What I really find valuable about this partnership is it puts data where people already exist. And to me, um, it's fundamentally why we've come together and structured this partnership. There's so much more to talk about, and I know we're going to have a, a bigger webinar next week to really get into the nuts and bolts. But one of the things that I think everybody's got to remember, Big Hand has been collecting data and warehousing data for years. We've learned from our customers what they want, what they want customized, what comes out of the box. Behind all this is a cube with measures and dimensions built on the MDX um, platform that we're able to push right into this example. And so again, with clients that are already starting to use it, they're getting more value out of their intranet immediately, Ted. Yeah. So, and that's, that's an important point. So with this integration, we're not, InfoDash isn't recreating and recompiling these metrics, which leads to inconsistencies and reconciliation efforts. We're pulling this directly from the big hand OLAP cube, which means that the numbers are going to be exactly the same. It doesn't matter if you go to the the Iridium um, dashboard and see them, or you see those numbers in context within an InfoDash page. The the numbers will be the same, which is which is obviously very important. There are also other use cases here. Uh, I'm looking down here in the My Matters section of this Client Matter page, and you see alerts. So the way InfoDash works is we deploy an API 
in your environment. That could be on-prem. That rarely happens these days. It's almost always in, in, in Azure. And we tie into all your backend systems, and then we create, we, uh, we expose a RESTful API that you can consume a bunch of different ways. I'm showing you examples of the consuming it through the, the info dash user interface. But now this also opens up the possibility that uh, you can use Power Automate. And Power Automate is a workflow tool. If you own Microsoft 365, you own Power Automate. And you can create flows, which are workflows. So for example, we see uh, AR alerts. So you could set up thresholds where you say anybody who gets you know over a hundred thousand dollars in accounts receivable, I need a workflow to kick off. Maybe that is an email to the practice lead and to the attorney. Maybe it is a task that gets created in Microsoft To Do. Um, maybe it's an alert that shows up on the home page of their internet. The big benefit here is with this is that the, this, this is where InfoDash and your intranet is where your almost all of your employees start their day. It's kind of the digital front porch of the firm. So if you want to have, you know, we do this with timekeeping compliance. Um, we, we have a bright red flashing alert. If you have it, um, if you're out of compliance, you can do the same thing here with, you know, accounts receivable. Um, also, as Rod alluded to, the year-end collection process historically has been managed through email. So the finance department, you know, makes a big push towards the end of the year since law firms operate on a cash basis to go collect all the outstanding accounts receivable. You know, sending out ma uh, you know mass email spreadsheets to uh, associates and partners is not the most efficient process. What if you just have a page? We, I don't have an example here. We'll show you uh, when we do the webinar next Monday, and I believe it's at 11 Eastern. Is that right, Rod? I think that sounds about right. Yeah, we'll show you actual live examples. We've deployed this uh, in, in firms, and we'll show you actual examples of, of, of what that will look like. But imagine how more efficient. The finance department doesn't have to build spreadsheets and email them out. And any communication that you can pull out of email is a huge productivity boost. Lawyers are absolutely overwhelmed in their inboxes. And it doesn't matter if you've got an assistant or not. There's certain things that they have to put eyes on. And that, then that is one of them. So make it as easy as possible and keep this stuff out of email. It'll save your finance team a whole bunch of time. And it'll save, a, it'll save the inbox from, of, of your lawyers. Ted, let me share a couple thoughts. Um, I know there's probably a handful of folks out there saying we would never put information on our lawyers' desktops, or I'd never put this type of information on the lawyers' desktops. Uh, for those firms, first and foremost, remember that we've got security in place. So the only information you're going to see is information that should be seen by that individual, right? That's really critical. Um, two, if you're not making your lawyers more business savvy and business responsible, um, I always like to say there are a handful of firms who just didn't want to change and become more business savvy. And, and we know where they've gone. Right. And that's 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 just the, the fact. Right. You've got to be very business savvy these days. Um, if you look at the, the last five or six mergers, some of the most interesting data around those mergers, similar PPL, similar revenue per lawyer, similar cost structures. We, you've got to know that going into M&A these days. Um, so it doesn't always mean that this is the right data for them, but you've got to really understand yourself as a business entity today, and you need your lawyers to be those stewards. I think the other piece that I'll share is I'm really excited that we, we're starting here where finance meets the intranet, but I think there is a lot of information that we can share. We do reporting in so many different areas. And as we consider where this relationship goes, I think we'll share more of that next week. When I think about internal versus external reporting, I know you're on a, an extra net mission. I think there's a lot that we can do to power collaboration between us 
our clients and their clients. And to me, that's another value driver for this relationship moving forward. And I'm, I'm really excited to dig in, in in much more detail next week. Next week, we'll really showcase all that's available already. The last piece I'll say is for the firms that have already gone up live, this is not a heavy lift. This has been a very quick lift for our clients. And again, I think it's because of the strong relationships that we have um, between InfoDash and Big Hand. And it's the strong tech background that we both, our, our organizations have. So we've been able to, to deliver very quickly for our clients. Yeah, that's a good point about the external facing component that we, we haven't even really delved into, but it, this will be, so, you know, our mission at InfoDash is to, is to unify collaboration, right? In turn, so historically, you know, uh, intranet, you had an intranet platform and you had an extranet platform. And the reason is because, you know, t 15 years ago, everybody had a, had a firewall and all their internal facing stuff sat on, on the inside of that firewall and their external facing stuff either sat in a DMZ or outside the firewall in maybe a, you know, extranet system like HiQ. Well, that model hasn't evolved a along with the push to the cloud. There's no reason to have two systems to manage internal and external collaboration. There's no reason at all. It's it's separate licensing. It's it's more expensive. You have to train your users on two systems. So we deploy our solution in your M365 tenant, and you will be able to create client-facing sites and expose some of this information if you choose. I can tell you this, not many firms do it, but clients want it, right? So law firms have historically been very conservative about what information they share on extranets with their clients, but we've talked to, you know, corporate counsel and they have, there's a huge appetite for more information besides just document sharing. So some of the big hand analytics could be a, a great value add and a differentiator and say, look, this is how... This is how, you know, your marketing department would be real interested in pitching this is, you know, this is what it looks like to collaborate with, you know, with our firm. This is the information that we provide you. This is the level of transparency that you'll get on matters and, and where we are in the process. And, and again, how how far you go down that rabbit hole is entirely up to you, but you'll have that option. Um, yeah. Do you have yeah, something else on that, Rod? Yeah. I was just going to say, you know, we, we again, we're, we're surveying the market constantly. Uh, in our last survey, 52 percent of uh, firms report increasing demand from their clients for strategic input into running their business. And 48 percent are being asked to use technology to drive efficiencies. So when we see that and we take it down one level, 42 percent of firms being asked to demonstrate the value of their investment. We're seeing clients add our matter pricing module at one of the fastest clips I've ever seen it. And it's so that they can price effectively, showcase the value of what they're doing and showcase the, the progress that they're making throughout the life of the matter. I don't want to go into all of what we can talk about next week, but I want to leave everybody with the fact that, wow, what the future holds for what we can deliver through this partnership to your clients to add value strengthen the relationships and build loyalty with your client base, I think is going to be an incredible step forward as we move ahead in this relationship. I mean, it's just kind of like SpaceX getting a man all the way to the highest level of space, doing a walk and bringing technology to the next layer of what we can be doing across the globe. Yeah, this is good stuff. We, so the purpose of this LinkedIn Live was to really just kind of give you guys a high-level conceptual view of the integration, uh, the value that the partnership brings to the market. And then we really want to dive in and show you how this works, like what this will look like in a, you know, a, with with live data. So that uh, opportunity will happen. There's a big hand webinar next Monday, October 14th at 11 Eastern. And what we will do is on the LinkedIn Live page that you're watching this now, we'll post a link to that or uh, to the registration for that webinar. And either someone from the Big Hand team or the InfoDash team will send a direct message to everybody who's registered for this with the link to register for the webinar next week. So 
that's really all we we had for today. We we appreciate everybody's uh, time. We really look forward to showing you something other than just a screenshot next week. It should get really interesting. And we're going to have our CTO on who is like rain man for intranets. Um, he's going to be able to talk through and articulate much better than Rod and I all of the possibilities uh, that the integration brings to the table. You have any last words, Rod? Yeah, just um, one for those of you who are coming at us from Florida, the Carolinas, you know, my thoughts go out to all of you who've either endured uh, the last hurricane or getting ready to, to bear down for this one. Uh, just final thought. Yeah, great point. I'm, I, my 80-year-old father is in Tarpon Springs, and my younger brother is a firefighter in St. Pete. He called me right before the webinar and um, or before this LinkedIn Live and said it's, uh, it's, it's pretty scary down there. So, yeah, thoughts and prayers. Uh, hope everything goes well, and we really look forward to meeting again with you guys next Monday. In the meantime, if you have any questions, reach out to Rod or I on LinkedIn. You can post comments on the, the event page, and we'll be happy to respond. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week. Take care.